now comes porter five forces model i think you are aware of the model let's discuss model let's discuss factor by factor what are the five factors in porter's five forces model tell me the first one bargaining power of let's analyze this more from a logical point of view rather than trying to remember things now what porter's five forces said is how all five factors together how all five factors together are going to impact how all five factors together is going to impact the intensity of competition and the profitability of the sector intensity of the competition and profitability of the sector coming to bargaining power of buyers power of buyers this is nothing but power of buyers to drive prices down to drive prices down in simple words this is what is happening if you have the power to drive prices down that's called bargaining power of buyers that's technically called bargaining power of buyers what is bargaining power of buyers power of the buyers to drive the prices down if bad is high bargaining power if there is a high bargaining power it is bad for me high bargaining power is going to be bad for any person now tell me when can you have high bargaining power what are the situations think about situations which can give you high bargaining power okay i am a major customer perfect if i am a major customer then i'll say for example i am introducing a batch i am introducing a batch 100 students together come they are somewhat interrelated they know each other there was a there was maybe some association or something you 100 people together represent as one association or maybe as part of some student association and you come to Bharadwaj institute and say that we are 100 people together we are 100 people together so we are 100 people together can you give us some discount i may say no but somewhere there is a significant power available with you now because you are 100 students together i may have to think about 100 students demand and i'll say okay we are reducing our fees by 10 percent 15 20 percent for you because you do seem to have significant power that's one second single buyer is one point which is written major customer single buyer okay another point i've got it from all online full knowledge this is an important point full knowledge about market what is full knowledge i know who are your competitor i know what are the substitute product possible i know where to check the prices i know everything when i have full knowledge my bargaining power will go up my bargaining power will go up any other points perfect okay so what is the influence of perfect competition okay so let me keep it as too many options too many options i have many options are undifferentiated product undifferentiated product this will impact at other places and all undifferentiated product there's nothing unique about my product there's nothing unique about my product so you come to me say that you want to get this classes there's nothing extraordinary about my mine and others are same if i don't agree to your price you'll say okay i'll go to the next guy i'll go to the next guy i'll go to the next guy any doubts on this i think these are the points i can think about customers ability to what drive the prices down customers ability to drive there can be other points and all let's look at porter's five forces model include five forces that collectively determine what intensity of competition power of customers few customers we wrote buy in large volume okay i did not think about this buy in large volume which is technically major customer which is technically major customer switching to different supplier is easy switching to different supplier we did not think about this point also what is switching to different supplier you have been continuously buying from abc limited maruti is continuously buying from abc limited why because maruti had a specific design abc was doing it properly now when maruti wants to shift from abc to someone else it has to give a new design or the same design some are uh, he has to manufacture i have to approve the design some molds have to be created for switching there could be an extra cost for switching there could be a extra cost another example a company 
has entered into a 10 year contract with a supplier a company has entered into a 10 year contract with a supplier the contract is already entered the contract is already entered now i cannot go and bargain a lot i cannot i cannot tell if you don't supply i'll move to next guy i'll move to next guy all that i cannot threaten still can i move yes you can move by paying a penalty switching is possible but switching is not easy or there's a cost of switching there is a cost of switching when you have a cost of switching you will obviously not try to do it you will obviously not try to shift when there is a cost associated with switching it for example at my home i have let's assume four or five products of same brand sixth product i may have to use the same brand only because there is an ecosystem which has got created it is very difficult for me to switch now it is very difficult for me to switch the brand because i have created an ecosystem of that brand i have created an ecosystem of that brand so this is the first point bargaining power of buyers clear any doubts on this because questions will come which of the following is not a reason for high bargaining power of buyer are not a reason for low bargaining power of buyer so something around that can come in exam second factor bargaining power of supplier very simple power of supplier power of supplier to drive prices what up to drive prices up raw material prices going up and fg prices is going down now i am under double trouble i am under double trouble raw material prices are going up and fg prices are going down now tell me what can be the reasons for power of supply to drive prices up exact opposite i'm going to write okay exact opposite one is few supplies i do not have too many options i do not have too many option i have only limited option i have only limited option or as a student mentioned here substitute not available for the raw material what else can be the factor limited availability of raw material scarce raw material what else okay unique product like you had dif undifferentiated product now i'm giving you a unique product monopoly is few supplies cost of switching is high i cannot switch so easily i cannot switch so easily so cost of switching is high another point which ICA metal talked about in one of the mcq you are the supplier uh, i am the buyer from you now what can happen is when i'm buying from you when i'm buying from you you the supplier is saying i want to charge extra price extra price i'm not agreeing to it then he says okay you are not agreeing i don't want you i'll directly move to the customer i'll directly move to the next layer i don't even want you i don't even want to maruti suzuki auto dealer customer auto dealer is now negotiating a lot with the maruti suzuki maruti suzuki is the supplier to auto dealer or maruti suzuki is saying i am the supplier i am going to push you a lot i am going to push you a lot auto dealer is saying why are you doing all this you should not do it maruti suzuki is saying i don't want you i don't want you i'll directly move to the customer when maruti suzuki has this flexibility of directly moving to the customer maruti suzuki will have higher bargaining power in the discussion will have higher bargaining power in the discussion so if if supplier can directly reach ultimate customer if supplier can directly reach ultimate customer or the next layer or the next layer not even the ultimate customer if he can reach see i am the customer for my supplier if he can reach his customers customer if he can reach his customers customer he says i don't want the customer in between i don't want the customer in between if supplier have high bargaining power again it can lead to challenge any doubts on this any doubts on this point some of the points have written extra points can come power of supplies few suppliers supplied input is crucial substitute for input is not available i can keep adding extra add-ons threat of substitute threat of substitute basically has an influence on bargaining power of buyers basic thing is likelihood what this means is likelihood of customer moving to alternative product likelihood of 
customer moving to what alternative product tell me how threat of substitutes can be there or when will it when will you have a high likelihood of customer moving switching cost is okay that is fine first is the first main point is like to like substitute our basic thing is close substitute i need to have a close substitute then other things is switching cost other things so i can have point on low switching cost product is not critical for me the product is not very critical for me so i am saying okay let's go with the substitute product this guy is not ready to understand yeah undifferentiated product product is not very critical for me so i said let's go ahead and switch it this guys are not understanding what i am trying to say i am trying to explain something and he is not ready to understand this let me go ahead and switch it let me go ahead and switch it uh, this threat can go down if you have a technologically advanced product if you have a technologically advanced product then the threat of substitute will go down the threat of substitute will go down if you have what a technologically advanced product clear any doubts on this likelihood of customer high if close substitutes are available only one point i have written high if close substitutes are available clear any doubts on this threat of new entrants likelihood likelihood of new competitor entering the industry likelihood of new competitor entering the industry now tell me what are the factors which can affect this okay so basic thing is no entry barriers no entry barriers today i will not enter telecom industry today i'll not enter telecom industry because i need a huge capital i need a huge capital anybody will enter a educational services industry anybody may enter a educational services industry by doing online and all physical again you need high capital regulations and all there main point is no entry barrier main point is no entry barrier second point which a student has highlighted emerging market if somebody knows that market is growing market is growing at a rapid rate market is growing at a rapid rate if market grows at a rapid rate what will happen it will attract your attention it will attract your attention a growing market in india so many people are coming in because india is an emerging market india is an emerging market this entry barriers is what organizations keep trying to create you keep trying to create and technology can become a major entry barrier technology can become a major entry barrier today i may not want to enter into swiggy versus zomato war i don't want to enter into this industry because i may not be a technologically strong person so basic main point is entry barrier main point is entry barrier along with that other attractive if industry is attractive then there is a high likelihood of new competitor entering the industry if the industry is attractive attractive industry let me put it in simple words attractive industry could be because of multiple reason favorable government policies favorable demand condition favorable demographics multiple favorable technology you can keep adding that steeple points you can keep bringing anything but basic logic is very simple is there a likelihood of new competitor entering the industry evaluates how easy it is for new competitor to enter the industry difficult to enter if there are barriers significant capital investment telecom i don't want to do technology requirement ola versus swiggy sorry ola versus uber war i don't want to get into because i am not a technologically matlab i cannot invest regulatory hurdle there can be regulatory approval for example i used to work in a credit rating agency in a credit rating agency you need a license from the government to work as a credit rating agency so no random company can suddenly say that i want to become a credit rating agency to become a credit rating agency you need approvals from the government so i can create regulatory hurdles also regulatory hurdles can also be there any doubts on this was the last factor intensity of competition among 
existing players intensity of competition among the existing players how is one player going to cut the other player the intensity of competition among the existing players how is one player going to compete with the other player or how one competitor likelihood of one competitor undercutting others are competing a lot with others now tell me what are the factors which can impact this one is okay technology can come first is major one is market size market growth see if the size is very big if the size is very big everyone says you also have a share i also have a share let's not fight let's not fight when the market is too big why should we keep fighting why should we keep fighting when does a fight come fight comes because when the market becomes narrow when the market or market is not growing major factor for me is market size and market growth other things i can keep adding market if you have a big market and if the market is growing why will two people fight with each other why are they going to fight with each other other factors is how many competitors cost leadership product differentiation you can keep bringing all that how many competitors are there one more major factor is exit barrier like you have entry barrier there can be exit barrier what is exit barrier is i have invested 1000 crores on the plant i am not ready to move out of the industry because i am not able to get value for this 1000 crore i am not able to sell this plant and move out i am not able to sell this plant and move out so what i am doing let me continue business and earn some money let me continue business and earn some money if there are exit barriers if there are exit barriers it will enhance the intensity of competition because you are not ready to move out you are not ready to so a best industry is one which has no exit barrier which has no exit barrier has entry barrier has entry barrier no close substitute no close substitute has limited bargaining power of supplier and has limited bargaining power of buyer has limited bargaining power of buyer if you have such a industry that's the most attractive industry that's the most attractive industry obviously such industries are very limited in nature you may not find for example pharma industry pharma may come under this depending on the product you are coming out bargaining power of buyers the hospital chains and buyers may not be able to bargain much with the pharma industry bargaining power of supplier i tell the supplier that if you are not ready to supply i have many people who can supply this so if you want to do do it otherwise i'll go to other people threat of substitute very limited threat of substitute entry barriers yes good amount of entry barriers can be there in the pharma industry it's not easy for you to enter you need regulatory approvals and all exit barriers can be there may not be that depend but if i have created a patented product no competition no major market size is there market growth is there so once you are able to spot some product like this you will make huge money you will make huge money any doubts on this so last part is level of competition high when there are many competitors undifferentiated product and exit barriers